Hey, this is Anthony with Revzilla TV, and welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new AGV AX8 DS Evo helmet. Now, the Evo is the successor to the regular AGV AX8 DS helmet, and the DS is the dual sport version of their AGV AX8 dirt helmet. So we've seen the AX8 come out, be it well adopted within the dirt world. They took it to the next level with the DS where they added the shield. And what I actually have here, the silver as well as the white are both gonna be regular DSs. And I have them out here. This is actually my helmet here on the right to compare to the Evo, which I have in the middle. You're gonna see they're very, very similar. So the DS took a face shield and some more on-road, off-road, dual sporting ability, and they've added that to the dirt foundation. What they're doing with the Evo is they're really they're really refining some of the nuances. So I spent a thousand miles in Italy in my AGV AX8 DS. I have some signatures on it. I rode this guy on the Italian Legendary Tour. And if you come in tight, you can see what it looks like without the visor. Really, I call it Top Gun style. You know, it's really just a gnarly looking helmet. But what you're getting around that $400 mark is a very lightweight, very high-end dual sporting helmet. Now moving into the Evo, I'm going to move my two helmets that are regular DSs out of the way here. Moving into the Evo, the first thing I want to hit on, besides the fact that it's a high-end, really lightweight, really functional dual sport helmet, is the nuances, the improvements over the last model, which was the regular DS. Now on the Evo, we really have three main improvements. The first one you can't see, and that's going to be the density of the padding on the inside as you get into some of the higher, the higher size range. So a large, extra large 2X in this helmet has a slight different fit pattern. It's still intermediate oval, but it's going to be a more consistent and a better fit for you guys with big heads. The second thing I want to note is when I flip it around to the bottom here, I'm going to pull off the chin spoiler. We've changed the way the front peak comes together. The first thing we've done is we've gone from hard plastic and now we've moved to a more rubberized piece here that's going to guard against really trauma to your chest and sternum area if you get in a situation where your head goes down and the helmet's going to come in contact with your chest. It's not something they saw a lot of, but it's just something that they evolved after hel this helmet being out for a couple years. I said, you know what, we want to make it a bit more protective. The other thing they've done is they've increased the density and the size of the internal guts here right around where your mouth goes or where this chin vent would be. So where this would come into your face in a crash situation, it's going to be a, a slightly more forgiving area of padding versus the thinner padding that was in the original DS. The other notable feature here is they've gone to aluminum bolts here for the peak just for durability's sake. You know there were plastic there were plastic bolts that sheared off on the previous DS and they've gone to aluminum. It adds a nice style touch but again it's they're a little bit more rugged going forward. If we come back to the helmet, if this is the first time you're seeing it, really it's going to have all the other same, the same other properties as the original AGV AX8 DS helmet. So it's dual sport, it's built off the dirt chassis of the regular AX8 helmet, it's a very lightweight helmet shell that's very strong, so it's DOT and ECE 2205 um, rated, it's going to be carbon fiber, Kevlar, and fiberglass, so you know you're getting that composite shell that's really nice and lightweight, but it's using a minimal amount of materials because you're using more technical and more specific materials built to to manage the energy in this outer shell. Removable peak, I showed you what that looked like on mine. The nice part, my favorite things about the helmet is I noticed, you know, when I spent a lot of time riding in this helmet, I wear it a lot when I'm riding our 12GS, or when, again, when I was touring with uh, Dionysia on the Italian Legendary Tour, Little distortion in the face shield. It's going to be a UV resistant face shield. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time changing face shields, you know, between a clear and a smoke, but it is a screw mechanism. It's not one of the super fast change modules, but again, that's, that's, I would consider that one of the drawbacks of the helmet. Ventilation was fine. I rode in Italy in this helmet. It's got nice big channels on the inside. You're looking at four intake vents from the front, so you're going to have two brow vents. You can see if you come in tight, open and close very easily. A single chimney here right on the top. And as we move down towards the chin, you know, where you might just have a grill on your dirt helmet, they've gone with a slider up and down that's going to vent to your face. And again, we do have a removable, removable breath guard here as well for the cooler times of the year and also a removable chin spoiler. If we start to turn it back, you're going to see that nice, big, rugged shape to it. It's going to be that, that dual sport or um, off-road shape, which has the ridge here that's great for putting your goggle strap across. You can wear goggles with this guy and then, you know, hit a dust storm and flip down the face shield. But also, as we look at the back here from a Venturi perspective or from a breathability perspective, you're going to have two Venturi vents up top as well as two that are built in along the rim down here at the bottom. What that's going to do is whenever you have a sphere going through the air at high speed, create an area of low pressure behind the helmet. It's going to help suck out, passively suck out that warm, moist air that comes in through the front, pulls sweat away, pulls that humidity away from your head, and sucks it out the back, uh, keeping you cool.
So as we move into the guts of this DS Evo, we're going to see it's similar materials that we've seen in the, in the DS's and the AX8's of the past. It's going to be a wicking material, it's antimicrobial from AGV, and cheek pads are easily removable, solid neck roll, it creates a decent seal. Again, I've dual sported in this helmet, I've also spent over a thousand miles on the road on twisties working hard on the bike and I felt it performed reasonably well for my expectations considering I was riding a myriad of different bikes when I was overseas and really you know I chose a dual sport helmet that was going to be maybe a little a bit of an anomaly compared to all of the sport helmets that everybody I was riding with was wearing themselves. So here's your cheek pad. It does have an, a decent cutaway to install a communicator system but I found that I actually ended up trimming some of the foam very easily removable on both sides so again if you're sweating, if it's the summertime, pull over, hit a gas station, rip these bad boys out, rinse them under the water. In about 10 minutes, they'll be dried out if you leave them out in the sunlight and you'll be good to go. Easy way to keep yourself cool in the warmer times of the year. And that's gonna be four snaps to pull out the entire comfort liner, which we'll see encapsulates the head. There you go, so we have nice big vest, or mesh panels that are gonna allow the channels to do their job as air enters the helmet and then circulates towards the back. And notice they've done an okay job of keeping the stitching away from areas that might create a seam. Um, I would love to see them move some of the snap tabs a little bit further away from pressure points uh, moving forward. That would be one of my critiques of the helmet liner itself. And if we look at the inside, you're going to see nice big channels, you know, 10 millimeter vent holes, both forward and aft, where vent would where the air is going to come in and hit your scalp and then allow itself to get sucked through those venturi vents in the back and pulled out of the helmet. You know, the last thing I did give it, I'm going to give it good marks from a personal opinion standpoint. I did, I, I have mentioned I've ridden in a lot. I also want to note that, you know, while I did trim the cheek pads a bit, I did have a good experience. Notice I have an SMH10 from Cena here as my comm system installed on my personal helmet, but I did feel that it was very easy to install the comm. It interfaced well. You know, sometimes when you get into the dual sport realm of helmets, it's a bit of a different shaped helmet. So you might have different or varying lengths of booms. With the Cena, it worked really well. Three of us used these in Italy. It was a nice touch and it actually, you know, you can see where this guy's mounted. It didn't add a ton of turbulence to the helmet. So I was, uh, I was pretty happy with that. And, you know, I also managed to get Agostini, Lucanelli, and uh, Simoncelli to sign this guy. So if you have any questions about the AGV AX8 DS Evo helmet, the newest version, shoot us a line. See us at RevZilla.com, 877-792-9455. As always, we're going to ship it for free. It's over 39 bucks. If you get the wrong size, send it back. We'll exchange it for free. If you just don't like it, we'll give you 100% back to your card without a restock fee as long as you send it back in new condition. And you can earn TeamZilla cash to be applied to your next order by continuing to shop with us. Thanks for watching. Find the AGV AX8 DS Evo helmet at RevZilla.com slash AGV. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.